All right. Uh, Jim Ryan has spent the last few days here in town. And uh, Jim Ryan from ABC News, good morning this morning. You, I guess, one of the few journalists who was not arrested last night, huh? <laughs> Me and one other guy. Yeah, there were two who were taken into custody just briefly. I don't think any charges were filed. They were at the McDonald's up uh, fluorescent from this QT station where I am this morning, uh, apparently charging their phones, working on their computers when the police came in and told them you're going to have to leave. Uh, they say that they didn't move fast enough and were taken into custody. Apparently one of them pushed against the Coke machine before this all uh, ended. They were questioned and then turned loose a few minutes later. And this all this preceded uh, what happened down here at the, at the QT station, though. Uh, just after sunset, a couple of hundred protesters had gathered here. There was a line of police officers in their riot gear. Uh, they, it got extremely tense. I mean, there was taunting going on, but it was peaceful. At some point, though, someone threw an object, and that's when uh, the, the, the tear gas opened up. Uh, the whole street was filled with it, and then percussion grenades were used, uh, loud sirens to try to disperse the crowd. It took some time, half hour, 45 minutes ago, uh, or, or so, as the crowd was pushed out, police officers chasing them on foot uh, and in their vehicles. Uh, then there was a, another uh, demonstration in front of the police station, which, as you know, is a few miles from here. That lasted just a, a few minutes, maybe an hour, and it ended peacefully. So uh, we're hearing Molotov cocktail numerous times. Did the police get hit with any type of Molotov cocktail? Not that I saw. Now, it may have happened, and I've been looking around for some evidence of that. I, have not, I did not see, see it personally, uh, but I do know that an object, was, I think it was a water bottle the first time. It may have been something later, but uh, personally, I didn't see it. Yeah, uh, so um, when... Uh, the the tear gas started and the protesting uh, got violent. Are these protesters left over from the quote unquote peaceful demonstration that was earlier in the evening? Then for the later demonstration, I think it was sort of a different group. Although some of the church leaders who had taken part in the unity march were still there and urging the crowd to, to be cool, to keep it calm, and to keep it peaceful. Uh, uh, clearly, those uh, those calls went unheeded, though. Yeah. So we were talking about this, uh, Jim Ryan, and at some point, I think the media has to come to grips with the fact that I think these protesters or these uh, violent seekers are only there because the television cameras and the news media are there, and that when the news media goes away, these protesters will go away. Yeah, I've heard they've been hearing that uh, that thing for about 26 years now. <laughs> Different stories that are, that are like this. Something is going on. Uh, people come in to cover it. People like me are, are sent to uh, assigned to go cover something like this, and there are complaints that well, you're here, and so they're going to do something. Well, they're doing something, so you're here. It, it's sort of a a, a spinning cycle, McGraw. I don't know what the answer is there because it's a story clearly, uh, but is it inciting people to do something? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I get it. And in, in this electronic world, now that in this social media world, um, you, you certainly have to cover a story where police officer, police officers are using tear gas to suppress and to uh, disperse a crowd. How could you not? Um, but the crowd's there for no other reason than to incite violence. And so, uh, where's the end of this? Great question, and it's not an answer yeah. that I have. There were not that many, and I think it's primarily television that people uh, complain about, that uh, the, the, the glare of the light and the right. cameras and all, or what draw people to uh, at something like this. There were not that many. I counted maybe three or four TV cameras out here in a crowd of a couple of hundred people. So, yeah. uh, But you're right, there were a lot of social media reporters as well and, and individuals doing their own sort of, uh, uh, yeah, you know, de facto reporting. How many people are we talking about were quote unquote protesting last last night? I would estimate that maybe 150 and maybe uh, more than that. Then often inside of the the, the the side streets, you know, you know the geography as well as anybody. That the, the quick trip is right down the street from where the shooting happened last Saturday, uh, and Florissant Avenue, West Florissant Avenue, is where so much of the demonstration has been going on since. Yeah, right past that quick trip, and I guess. Uh, all of that is is residential areas. Have you had a yes. chance to talk to any of the homeowners there? The people who actually live there, they must be be petrified. Uh, you know, I think you're right. Uh, there is some concern. They want to see this all come to an end, a peaceful end. Uh, as the Unity March was going down West Florissant yesterday, 
uh, you know, people were standing in their backyards just kind of watching it go by. But I think you're right. I think there is some sense that, okay, let's, let's get to the bottom of the investigation. Let's what, find out what happened between Michael Brown and the police officer last Saturday and uh, put these nightly demonstrations to bed before somebody, somebody seriously gets hurt. Yeah. There were a couple of news conferences ye- yesterday. The police chief of Ferguson spoke. Uh, Bob McCullough spoke. Anything from those you found of interest? Yeah, well, a couple of things. I mean, McCulloch did not say much. The county prosecutor said that uh, this will be a thorough investigation, that there's no timeline attached to it. He'll take as long as he needs to to get to the bottom of what happened. Uh, The police chief had a little more information, at least. Uh, He he was asked about injuries that the police officer might have suffered in the scuffle with Michael Brown. Brown, of course, uh, his family, his attorney, and some witnesses have said that he had surrendered, he had, had his hands in the air, and that he was shot from some distance. The, the police chief says uh, that uh, his officer who was involved had swelling to the face, that he had suffered some kind of injury, uh, apparently uh, some evidence that there was a disturbance, yeah. a physical disturbance, a confrontation. Yeah, so he did go to uh, the emergency room or at least the hospital to get treated for, for, for some injuries is, is what he said. Also, I thought of interest was um, they, they, there's a lot of complaints that the body was, was left in the open for a number of hours. And the police chief uh, said something really interesting about that. Do you want to? Do you want to tell us what he said? Well, you know, I think that he and the investigators, and, and when you see something like this, the concern of the investigators is that they want to preserve the scene as much as possible and for as long as possible. Uh, but you're right; there were complaints about that that it wasn't taken away uh, more quickly before this all had. Uh, uh, the investigation had been completed before the forensic evidence had been gathered up. Yeah, absolutely. He said there's, you only have one chance to get it right. But he also said that there were shots fired in that apartment complex. So while they were trying to gather evidence for the evidence scene, there were police officers who were trying to make the area secure from, from gunshots. And so yep. that was another major problem as to why the body was left out, but yet covered up and tried to be treated respectfully during the whole process. Uh, yeah, it's, it's that tense situation. You never know what's going to happen in, uh, in Ferguson right now. Yeah. Uh, Jim Ryan in uh, Ferguson continuing his uh, national coverage for ABC News and, and checking in with us. Jim, be safe. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for drawing. You got it. 628 here. Big